What Ford CEO just announced is putting dealers in full-on panic mode. Over the past few years, Ford took advantage of customers by raising MSRPs and even asking over MSRP on some of their vehicles. But now those same vehicles are just sitting on lots and rotting. And you know what's still being marked up at Ford, which was a total surprise to me? These work vans right here. This 2024 Transit has a $2,000 markup. I'm at a Ford dealer today and they have rows and rows of F-150s, Broncos, excursions, and more just sitting on lots for several weeks or even months. Just a year ago, it was almost impossible to find a Ford Bronco. Now they're just stacked up and Ford dealers are running out of room for them. Just look at this. They had to park all these Broncos in the grass all the way to the street over there and another row of Broncos all the way across here and they just have no more room to put them. Just a few weeks ago, I couldn't find any Ford Rangers on just about any Ford dealer lots, but now they got a little bit here and some right here just stacking up. And as for the Ford F-150, they're stacked with so many that they have to offer huge discounts. But despite having to give big discounts on 2024 models, Ford CEO decided he's still gonna raise MSRPs in 2025 despite them not even selling at these prices in 2024. Ford dealers are in big trouble right now and if they don't get rid of this 2024 inventory, I'm not sure where they're going to put 2025 models, let alone sell those at higher MSRPs. One of the lowest priced trucks you can find from Ford right now is the Ford Maverick. And just a few months ago, you couldn't find any on the lots. And every time I come to this Ford dealership, they have some sitting on the lots right now. And last time I was here, they actually had some discounts up to like $1,500 to $2,000 off. They don't really have the sign in the window here for this one. So I don't think this is discounted, but it is still a 2024 model, not a 2025. And its MSRP is $32,680. And this isn't even really a super high trim level. It's an XLT which is kind of the mid-range of the Mavericks. But I will say the Mavericks are one of the, one of the trucks that a lot of people want and are excited about, but Ford dealers just never have enough of them. And every time they're on the lot, those Mavericks do go pretty quickly. And I'm imagining that they're probably going even faster with a discount, because last time I was here, they had like eight Mavericks and I only see one now. While the Ford Maverick may be a hot seller for these dealerships, it sucks that they can't get enough. But there is one vehicle that Ford dealers do have that they have way too many of that they just are having trouble getting rid of. And that is the Ford Bronco right here. This dealership actually has so many Broncos that they can't even fit them in all the parking spaces on this lot. As you can see here, we've got a row of Ford Broncos here parked nicely on the lot. However, right on the other side, they had to make room for all the F-150s. So the Broncos are just sitting here stacked up in the grass on top of this curb. And I've been to this dealership here in Boise, Idaho quite a bit, but this is the first time I've ever seen any vehicle parked in this grass right here. And my guess is they're trying to clear room for a bunch of new 25 models of the Ford F-150 coming in because the lot is already full and they gotta have these 25s coming in. So to make space, they're just pushing the Broncos out to the side, basically in the far corner of the dealership. Now, when the Bronco first came out, obviously it was impossible to find. There were so many markups. Dealers were just like screwing people over, including Ford employees getting screwed over as well. But now they're just struggling and desperate to sell them. A good example is this 2024 Badlands sitting right here. And one of the reasons is the MSRP is really, really high. This is actually higher this is actually higher than buying a rubicon wrangler right now at an msrp of seventy thousand six hundred and seventy dollars and they do have a discount but it's not as much as you would think uh, to get this pushed off the lot i think the discount needs to be way higher right now the dealer has a discount of fifty six hundred and seventy five dollars and a factory rebate of two thousand bringing the discount to seven thousand six hundred and seventy five dollars which drops the price all the way down to sixty two thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars and i've been here a couple times in the past few months in uh, I see a lot of the same ones that have been here for quite a while, and I think it might take 10K off of this Badlands to actually get rid of this thing. I think if they drop it down to 60, maybe there's a better chance. But that's not the only Bronco that's discounted. This one has $8,000 off. It's a wild track. This is another wild track with $8,000 off, and another Badlands also with $8,000 off, bringing it to $61,220. But that's not the only SUV that Ford is struggling to sell. The Explorer used to be one of the hottest SUVs that you could buy, but with competition from places like Kia, Honda, and even Mazda, they have some really nice mid-trim level SUVs. Ford is having to put some huge discounts to get rid of these Explorers as well. For example, this is a 2025, a brand new 2025 model. And to get rid of this thing, they're having to offer a $6,000 discount, bringing it from 53,000 to 47,000. And at that price, 45 to 47 is pretty much the average price of most new vehicles that sell nowadays. This is average between the cheaper ones and the more expensive ones. Maybe they'll get rid of it 
it, but it just shocks me that they're already having to discount a 2025 model of the Ford Explorer. And another Ford SUV that's really taken a hit is the Ford Expedition. This is one of the most expensive Ford SUVs that you can buy and also the largest. And this is where the SUV prices get kind of insane. Uh, let me show you something here. This one right here with like a higher trim level is a 2024 Timberline Edition in four wheel drive. And the MSRP will probably blow your mind on this thing. It's $84,845. And the discounts start getting really, really massive once you get to these expeditions. There's a total discount between the dealer discount and the factory rebate of over $11,000, actually $11,850, bringing it all the way down to $72,995, which honestly for an expedition is still kind of expensive. It should be under 70, maybe mid 60s at that point. But the prices just keep going. This is 73 with a discount. This is 71 with a discount. And I did find the cheapest one I can find so far. It's this 2024 XLT and the MSRP is $73,215. And this still has that same big discount. It's discounted $11,220, bringing it to $61,995. And honestly, it might take more to get rid of this one because this thing should be like in the mid 50s in my, in my opinion. But enough about the SUVs. As you can see here, they are completely stacked with Ford F-150s. And actually, I know this gray trimmer has been here for a while because it was in one of my videos like two or three months ago and it's still here pretty much in the same spot it was on this row so i don't even know if these have moved at all but that's not the only row of f-150s that they have it goes all the way back over there all the way down the side these aren't even really parking spots right here and then all the way down this row here and there's even more let me show you this if you squeeze through these little bit of trucks right here another trimmer another overpriced trimmer we've got another row on the left here and another row on the right and these do look like a bit lower trim level models like this one right here is an xlt and even the xlts have huge discounts this 2024 is a 64,000 msrp but there's a discount of over ten thousand dollars bringing it to 54 245 and actually for the first time ever i'm seeing a full-size f-150 below $50,000. Whenever I hear a car salesman tell me why their truck is worth $10,000 over MSRP, I actually don't have to listen to them thanks to today's sponsor, and that's Raycon. Their everyday earbuds deliver high quality audio, a ridiculous 32 hours of battery life, an ergonomic design that comfortably fits the widest range of ears. Plus these are extremely high quality and very affordable. Raycon's everyday earbuds also come with active noise cancellation, which I think is pretty cool. And it's a feature that's a must have for me when I'm trying to stay focused. I've been using these Raycon earbuds for the past few days, and they're really perfect for using while working on your car in the garage, watching YouTube videos, walking the dog, and just about anything else that you can think of. I've also really been liking their protective case covers, and these come in so many different designs. And of course I got the yellow because it just matches my Jeep. And not only do these earbuds look really great, they also support wireless charging. So if you want a pair of these Raycon earbuds, which I highly recommend, you can actually save really big right now for Black Friday. Go to buyraycon.com slash motorfeed today and get up to 30% off site-wide. That's right, you'll get 30% off everything on Raycon's website when you go to buyraycon.com slash motorfeed. Thanks to Raycon for supporting this channel. Let's get back to the video. This 2024 right here, also an XLT, starts the MSRP at $59,000 drops at over 10 grand, bringing it to $49,245, which makes me wonder if these continue to sit on into 2025. Will we see any of these full-size XLT trim levels or XL trim levels dip down below 40 grand? Because I think some of them are getting close. Like this silver one right here, is down to 44,895 and it's an STX. And the mid, like 44 is the cheapest I've seen one in a long time because higher trim levels like these trimmers just have an outrageous starting MSRP. I mean, just take this black one, for example, the MSRP is almost $80,000 and discounted seven grand almost to 72,995. But that's still ridiculously high for an F-150, even with leather and a big screen. And as far as trimmer goes, they're stacked with them. They got them here, they got that one there. These two right here, there's a few more over there. And besides the platinum, that's one of the higher trim levels. Here's something interesting that for a while was really, really hard to find. And it's always been one of my favorite Ford trucks. And that's the little Ranger. Obviously it's not as a little as the Maverick anymore, but uh, I just love the little Ranger. And I think almost everyone loves the Ranger. And for a lower trim level model, it's not too crazy 
uh, as far as price goes. And this is a four-door STX Ranger, which I think looks really good in white. And while the MSRP kind of pushes it a little bit at 38.455 with the 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine, it's just a little baby engine, probably still gets the job done in this. The price does become more reasonable when they have discounts on these Rangers. And what's interesting is uh, you couldn't find Rangers for a while and they would come in and just be gone. Now, even the Rangers are kind of sitting around and it's surprising to see uh, that they have this that they have discounts on them. Like this one here has a dealer discount of $29.60, bringing it down to $35,495. And being able to find a little Ranger at around thirty-five dollars in my opinion, I think is kind of cool. But obviously they do get more expensive with like a Lariat. And it kind of pushes you into maybe grabbing a full-size F-150, like an STX or XLT trim level, because the MSRP on this is a little bit more than I thought it would be. Still the same 2.3 liter EcoBoost, and the MSRP is $50,105, which I think uh, that's too much for a Ranger, and you might as well just go jump into a full-size F-150. And now, while Ford is stacked and stacked with 2024, even newer 2025 models like that Ford Explorer that they're getting rid of, with as much as almost a $12,000 discount, there's one brand that's actually been outselling Ford and let me show you that right now. Chevrolet and GMC have actually been giving Ford a pretty big run for their money when it comes to truck sales. And if you actually combine the sales between Chevrolet and GMC, they're just squeaking by and beating Ford in total truck sales when you compare their full-size trucks to like an F-150. But Chevy does still have a big issue that Ford is also dealing with. And that's because over the past few years, Chevrolet has also gone up on the MSRPs of their trucks and they're having to do something drastic to get rid of them at the end of 2024. For example, this Duramax diesel Z71 is probably one of the slower selling full-size trim levels of the Chevy, and it has an MSRP of 65,405, which if you compare it to Ford, is actually a better deal, especially if you want a diesel, there's no F-150 that you can get with a diesel. But like Ford, they're having to do some things to get rid of them, and that's with discounts. So the MSRP is 65,405, and it's discounted all the way down to 58,405, a discount of $7,000. And that's not the only one they're having to discount. It's not just the Duramax ones that are really slowing down at the end of the year. Vehicles like this Z71 that dealerships have modified with lift kits and aftermarket wheels that they charge like a heck of a lot of money for also have to be slashed. So they added over $5,000 in aftermarket parts to a truck that already has a $68,000 MSRP. But the interesting thing is they added $5,000 in parts to this Chevy and they actually had to discount it $5,000 to try and get rid of it. So they're pretty much gonna eat the cost of this lift kit and the MSRP off of that truck right there, which blows my mind. So Chevy is pretty much getting as desperate as Ford is right now at the end of the year. And honestly, it's not looking really good for, for any of them. And pretty much every truck here is discounted. I mean, that's got a discount, that's got a discount. This one has a discount here, which actually is interesting because this is a 2025 model that already has a discount from 48,615 to 41. And for a 2025, that is uh, pretty dramatic in my opinion. And now there is one brand that I never thought uh, I would say this, but their cars are still selling really, really well. But some things that they've done to their trucks has caused sales to just plummet at the end of this year. And that brand, shockingly enough, is Toyota. And back when Toyota were using the naturally aspirated engines, like the V8 in the Tundra and the V6s in the Tacoma, they were probably some of the most, if not actually, they were the most reliable pickup trucks that you could buy. But that's not the case anymore. And honestly, what they did is hurting sales of these trucks currently. For example, the Tundra's new twin turbo V6 has a major problem to where a lot of the engines are just exploding and they had to recall over 100,000 of these trucks. And of course, they're taking care of the problem. They're basically replacing every single engine in all of those 100,000 trucks. And that is just a lot of money to eat as a company. And that's causing the sales of the Tundra in the second half of this year to absolutely just totally slow down because a lot of people want to wait it out and see what happens with those engines before they go and try to buy a Tundra. And of course, they don't want to buy a Tundra that they immediately have to turn around and put in the shop for weeks or even months uh, just to get a new engine put in it. And that makes a lot of sense. It's better to just wait and buy one 
that has the fix in the newer engine already in it. And more than likely that's gonna be starting with the 2025 models. But currently they have so many of these 2024 models sitting on the lot that I feel like it's gonna be quite a while before the 2025 models start to trickle into dealerships because if they don't have any room for the 2024s, where are they gonna put the 2025 models? And that's not the only new truck that's having issues. The Toyota Tacoma is also having some problems as well. Granted, it is less problems and it's just a bunch of like little stuff. So they did switch to a turbo four cylinder engine and so far that has proven to be just as reliable as some of the old Toyotas because that engine is in other vehicles and it's been tested for quite a while already. And so far there's, there's no explosions like on the Tundra right here. But they do have issues with some of the rear diff parts breaking and just disconnecting and just a bunch of other little issues that are causing people to question the reliability and the future of Toyota. And that's just caused sales of trucks like the new Tundra and the brand new Frontier to just kind of slow down a little bit right now. I think when it comes to the new Tacoma especially, um, personally, I think it looks darn good. I think with the design, they did a great job, but I think a lot of people are just waiting and they want to see what happens with these new turbo four-cylinder engines. And I think it's smart on the first year of any new vehicle, especially with something as dramatic as like the changes that the Tacoma has had to just kind of wait, give it at least a year, give it some time and kind of let Toyota work out all of the kinks in these trucks. But despite the trucks here, Toyota is still crushing it in sales of uh, something that I personally really like. And that's the new Prius. I think the new Prius, honestly, this thing looked darn good. And I never thought I would say this, but uh, I would probably buy one of these if I had like a daily commute and, or I traveled like a lot and drove really, really far. The new Prius would totally make sense just because of the insane gas mileage that you get. And honestly, again, it looks really, really cool. And that's not the only thing that's doing good at Toyota. Like always, their Camry sales are totally crushing it. And this new style looks pretty good as well. The headlights also kind of resemble what the new Prius looks like as well, as far as the shape goes. But in the end, do you think it's, is Ford gonna recover from all of these ridiculously high prices? Or is, the CEO raising MSRPs in 2025 just gonna hurt sales even more. Personally, I don't think it makes sense to raise MSRPs when you already have to discount trucks almost $11,000 just to get rid of them. If you made it this far in the video, please hit that like button to spread it to more people. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.